fresh. So anybody who is not born again is dead spiritually. Physically they are still alive, going through the normal daily activities, but spiritually they are dead. And many of them are, can also actually be pastors. They can be in charge, they can be evangelists, but it does not take away the fact that they are spiritually dead. And if they die in that state, they will not see Christ. They will not make heaven because their names will not be written in the book of life. This is why God sent the Apostle Peter to Cornelius was a very godly Roman, uh, a centurion, who had done a lot of good works, and built a synagogue for them, he prayed all the time, he gave alms. So God said that, hmm, this man, if he dies in the States, he will not see me, despite all this good he's been doing. Hmm. So, because of that, he sent Peter to preach to him. Why? So that he could be saved, he be born again. So all the good works he had done, would not have made any difference if they died in that state. It would have been completely waste. Some would say, oh, how can that be possible? He built this, this church, he got us a van. All these things are not enough to remove your sin. Oh. Say, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is our soul that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. When it says, what can make me whole again? Is the Christ with a quickening, the making a life of somebody who is spiritually dead. Adam and Eve were alive spiritually. They talked to God like a human being. God talked to them. They saw God, nothing happened to them. But the day they ate the forbidden fruit and disobeyed God, they died spiritually and were immediately separated from the presence of God. Sorry that when God came, Adam and Eve were hiding. See? Sin will make you hide from God. Because your nakedness is exposed. Before then, they didn't even realize they were naked because they were covered with the glory of God. They didn't see themselves naked. But once they sinned, their nakedness was made of to them. They began to run away from God. What am I trying to tell you? Sin is the greatest problem of humanity. That is why it costs the Son of God, his life to redeem us from sin. Nothing else could save you and I except the death of our Savior Jesus Christ. So if you have been quickened and made you alive, you who are dead in trespasses and sins. It's not that you don't sin after you get born again. You still sin, but there is an advocate the Lord Jesus Christ who will plead for you as long as you confess that sin. And that sin will be washed away with the blood of Jesus Christ. But if you are not born again, the blood cannot be applied because you have not admitted to the fact that you are a sinner. You have not been washed by the blood. So the blood makes so all these people that are washing the blood and are not born again, they are wasting their time. Hmm. That power in the blood is only available to those who are under the blood, who are in covenant with God. They are the ones that have the blood, the blood, the blood, and it work for them. If you don't know Jesus Christ as a personal savior, you are wasting your time calling on the blood. Because the blood does not recognize you. You are not on this list of people who are under him. So how can they work for you? Remember the sons of Sceva who tried to cast out a uh, to deliver a man who had an evil spirit. And the evil spirit said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? You are using the name of Jesus. But we don't see you on the list of people who know Jesus. You are not on the list of people who took boss to fear. You are just using the name. And what happened? The man jumped on them and beat them. Six of them tore that house to pieces. And because of that singular act, so many people came to salvation. So you can't just use the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. If you don't know him, it will not work for you. So say, so you had a quicken. You, us, he made a life who are dead in our sins because of that blood. That blood saved us, he brought us to life. We were dead spiritually. That means you were separated from God. 
I mean, it's, you are not just coming out with God, you are, you are not, he was not really responsible for you. And many people are in this state and they think they're okay because they don't know better. They don't know that they need to be born again. That's why Jesus Christ called to Nicodemus. Yes, Nicodemus, you are, you are an elder in the church. But let me tell you the truth. Until you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus was like a pastor. And Jesus told him straight to his face. Now, look, uh, I know what you've come for, but let me tell you, this is what you need most. Salvation. One correct that before you ask anything else. We are asking, in where in time past, you know what? According to the cross of this wall, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walks in the children of disobedience. Now, what is he talking about? Before you were born again, all of us lived like any other normal human being. We behaved like any other normal human being. We had grudges, we had malice, we hated, people hated us. We did whatever we wanted according to what our flesh wanted. We believed what they sold us on the news, on the papers. We didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ the Lord. That's what it means that you walk according to the course of this world. Now, this world believes that homosexuality is okay, lesbianism is okay, they believe in cohabiting without getting married. They believe that uh, so, you know, once you know, it's okay to have an affair once in a while, you can smoke, you can drink. I mean, that's, you know, they have all these freedoms. That is the world. So if you don't know Christ, you will believe those things and live your life according to those principles. But the day you get born again, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you that those things are wrong. He will lead you to His world, He will show you the error of your ways, and you will repent. So according to the prince of the power of the air, there is a prince of the power of the air who is that? Satan. He is the one that controls most of this world. The Illuminati are his agents. If you see any of these famous stars, football stars, music stars, Hollywood stars, I would say 90% of them, if not more, are in the Illuminati. Because to get that faith, you need to go to them. Otherwise, you won't get there. Except God is with you. So let's read uh, Colossians 1 21. Colossians 1 The prince of the power of the air is Satan. Even when Jesus Christ said, said, The power of this war, the God of this war, that's what he called him. He said, He has come, he, said, he has no power on me. The spirit that walks in the children of disobedience. So when you see somebody being disobedient, being unruly, you know that it has the spirit of Satan in him. That is the spirit walking in him. You know, it's just like you have a car. Some cars are very fast, some cars are slow, some cars have different uh, engine components. So it's the engine in them that determines what that car does, just like a human being. It's the spirit in you that will determine what you do. Jesus Christ said, by their fruits, you shall know them. The fruit is the evidence of what's presiding inside. Colossians 1.21 and uh, Ephesians 6, chapter, uh, Ephesians 6, chapter 12. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, yes. who once were alienated, mm-hmm. and enemies in your mind, yes. by wicked works, mm-hmm. yet now he has reconciled. That's it. Yet now. Because, because by wicked works means that we lived according to the worldly standards before. Those are wicked works, they're not worldly works. But when we were born again, God was brought us back to Himself. He reconciled us, us. Why? Because we were separated from God before then. And people don't understand that. They think, why do you need to be born again? After all, we come to church, we sing the songs, we do every other works. What's the need for being born again? They don't realize that all those things they're doing cannot make them inherit heaven. And they are under the wrath of God. Because without that blood, your sins are still against you, and God is angry at you all day long. That's what the Bible says. Go to Colossians 3, verse 6, and um, Ephesians 6, 12. You can sit down. Ephesians 6, 12. Yes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, yes. against powers, and against mm-hmm. rulers of darkness. That's it. 
36. Those are the powers of the air. Now, Colossians 3 6. Yes. Because of these things, mm -hmm. the wrath of God mm -hmm. is coming upon mm -hmm. the sons of disobedience. That's it. In which you yourselves once walked. Yes. When you live in death. Right. So basically, when you are saved, you are delivered from the bondage of sin. From the bondage of Satan. That's exactly what happens. All those evil spirits that were walking in you, making you to fornicate, smoke, drink, for defraud people, lie, cheat, all those evil spirits, the day you are born again, they have to live. Because the sins that held you down and made you obedient to them, those sins are removed. Once they are removed, then they have no more legal rights to be in your life. They have to be. It's why you hear people testimonies very short. People saying that ah, I used to drink so much, but the day I met Jesus, ah, I don't know what happened. I just lost the taste for it. I couldn't drink anymore. If I drink, it was like poison in my mouth. And I used to fornicate, but the day I was sick, I just couldn't think about it. It's really a deliverance that happens when you're born again. Because before you're born again, the worldly spirits of Satan, they are in you. And they're making you do those evil things in your heart, in your mind. You know, anybody else, nobody can do anything. There's no, no guiding principle, nothing controls them. They try, but they always fail. So, among them, also, we had a conversation, that means we had our own behavior before we were born again. Times passed in the loss of our flesh, you see. The loss of our flesh, those are, that's what is referring to those things that we mentioned. Those works of the flesh in Galatians, and go to Galatians 5, 19 and read them. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You see? If you're not born again, you are under the wrath of God. God is angry at you every moment. Go to Galatians 5:16. 5, 5:16. 16. 5, 16. So I'll go to Psalm 51, verse 5. Galatians 5, 16. Hmm? This I say then, yes. walk in the Spirit, uh -huh. and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's it. And go to Galatians uh, uh, verse 19. Verse 19. Now yeah. the works of the flesh are manifest, mm -hmm. which are these, yes. adultery, fornication, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and devotion. Yes. Idolatry, witchcraft. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, curses, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in the time past, that they we do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Say, so, but the fruit of the Spirit, the outward evidence of the indwelling of the Spirit in you, those are the fruits of the Spirit. In other words, when people see those things, they know that this man or this woman has the Holy Spirit in her or him. Now what are those? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ are crucified in the flesh with affections and lusts. If you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desires of vain glory, provoking, provoking one another, envying one another. So it's very clear, the works of the flesh. If you have any of those works in you, you have to question what's going on in your life. What kind of spirit is inside you? Because for you to do those things, it means there's the spirit of the world, or one of the spirits of Satan is inside you. Pride, anger, wrath, one of those evil spirits must be inside you. And you need deliverance from it. You need God to deliver you. So by nature of the kingdom of wrath, the kingdom of the world, God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, where he loved us. Very important. God who is rich in mercy. You know, we cannot exhaust God's mercy. That's why he says his mercy is very new every day. Great is that faithfulness. God says, we're not destroyed because he is God. If it wasn't God, he would have destroyed all the mercy from before now. But he's a merciful God. And it's his mercy that you and I are living on. 
It's not that we are righteous or anything like that, no. So God was rich in mercy for his great love where he loved us. You know, Jesus Christ on the cross, as he was dying, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The same people he prophesied to, the same people he healed, the same people he fed, the same ones that said, crucify him. But he didn't hold it against them. Because it was true. In reality, they did not know what they were doing. They were misled by the chief priests. These are just people who, you know, they're like sheep. And Jesus knew that. He said, Father, don't count it against them. Just like Stephen when Stephen was told. He said, Father, hold not this against them. That is true love. When you can hate, when you can love those who hate you, those who despise you, those who curse you, that's when you display godly love. I wish most of us, or many of us, could have that spirit in us. Even when we are dead in sins, has He quickened us together with Christ? By grace you are saved. So that even when we are dead in sins and trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ. Now, this born again experience is only through Christ, and it's because of His grace that we are saved. So nobody can boast and say that, oh, I was saved because I was so holy, I went to Bible school, or I went to church every day, or I fasted so many days, that's why I was saved. No, grace means something you do not deserve. Unmerited people, that's what it means. You did not merit your salvation, you cannot walk for it. No matter how much you walk, no matter how much you beat yourself, no matter how much you suffer, you cannot suffer enough to Inherit the gift of salvation is entirely through grace. And all of us who are saved, none of us can boast because it's not by your works that you're saved. You had no hand in it, it was purely a gift, a free gift for the matter by God. So all of us must remain humble and say, Lord, I thank you for my salvation. I know there's nothing I could have done. Who are around this is not my family history, it's not because my dad is a pastor, or my mom is a pastor, or my great grandfather was an evangelist. No, no, no. You were entirely saved by the grace of God, and you had no hand in it, no contribution to your salvation. So, by grace, you saved, you quickened us who are dead in sins before we knew Jesus. For the day we received it, He lifted up. That bag, that heavy weight of sin from us, with Christ, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, right now, if you're born again and following God, you are seated already with Jesus Christ in the heavenly realm. Now, you are still here at this day, but your spirit is already in heaven, seated with Jesus Christ. Because of that salvation, you are brought up, elevated, promoted to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Let's go to um, Ephesians 1.20. It's the grace of God that has saved you and I. You know, when the pastor found out this church was called, what he had was luli, luli, luli. And immediately he had the interpretation. This means the grace of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1.20. Yes. Which he wrought in Christ when mm-hmm. he raised him from the dead mm-hmm. and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Mm-hmm. So, as, far as, far as God set Jesus as Savior at his right hand, so you and I are seated with him in the same place when we receive his gift of salvation. You know, Jesus Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. If you were not so, I would have told you. So that you can be where I am. He told us, God, John, He's already gone ahead of us to prepare our places with Him. So everything is through Christ. It's not through Holy Mary. <clears throat> it's not through Mohammed. It's not through any Hindu or any other God. I know many religions worship all kinds of things. But it's pure idolatry when you see people kissing statues of idols, carrying statues of idols from house to house, statues of saints, and praying to saints is pure idolatry. It's a serious sin against God because 
Holy Mary is the mother of Jesus. She never died for anybody. She was not sinless. She was like you and I, a sinner. But God saw her humility and chose her to bring forth the Savior of the world. That's it. If our people have seen her, say that she's crying in heaven. Why? He says, so many people are worshipping me. So tell them to stop worshipping me. I did not die for anybody. Go and tell them, don't worship me. I, I went to a school when I was young called St. Barnabas School. And in that school, immediately you enter, the first thing you see is a huge statue of Holy Mary. That's the first thing you see there. And uh, they told us, don't pray to Jesus. No, they were told us what they taught us. Said, no, pray to Mary, then Mary will tell Jesus. That's what the word brought us there. That's school. Catholic school. And it's still there today. St. Barnabas Friends. Very good school for that matter. But that was the teaching, that was the doctrine, which was wrong. They didn't allow you to pray directly to Jesus. No. You had to pray to Mary. And then Mary will tell Jesus. That's, that's the bad version. So we must accept that is everything we have, you and I have, is only through Jesus Christ. It's not through anybody else. It says that the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. You see? Everything is through him. Everything is through Christ Jesus. Everything you have. Tell us Titus to give us four. Titus give us four. Everything is through Christ. He is the one that did everything. He took the punishment, he took the death, he took the disgrace, he took the suffering. He is the one worthy of our praises. And we must not share that glory with anybody else. One, Titus gave us four. Book of Titus gave us four. For that, yes. Yes, that kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the mercy of God that let him come and die to save you and I. He didn't have to come, he chose willingly to come. That in the ages to come, he might show that, okay, for by grace are you saved through faith. You cannot be saved if you don't believe in the work of the cross. You have to believe for that's the faith is referring to. For you to be saved, you must be it first. And then the grace of God will come upon you and save your soul. Since that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You know, when you give somebody something, they didn't merit it, they didn't demand for it, they didn't work for it. They give me something freely given. So salvation is freely given by God to you and I. And we should be forever thankful for that. Because there are many who are looking for what we have. But they don't have it. And they don't know that's what they want. There are many people today who really are looking for salvation. But they are looking for it in the wrong place. They have not come to Jesus for it. They are looking in the place of seeking fame, wealth, popularity, success, and all these things. Whereas all they need is that salvation. Once they get that salvation, their hearts will be content. They will stop searching. There's a void in the heart of men which only God can fill. So for by grace are you saved. Let's go to Romans 4 16, 2 Timothy 1 9. 2 Timothy 1 9, Romans 4 16. It is the gift of God. In Matthew 16 17. Romans 4 16. Yes. Therefore, it is of faith mm -hmm. that it might be according to grace. Yes. Of the world was already ordained 
Matthew 16, 17 says that Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. That's when he asked him who people thought he was. And Simon Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Simon, this answer you gave is not your head thinking. It's not you that brought this answer. It's my Father that gave you the answer. He said, Not of works, lest any man should boast. This by itself would disqualify about 80% of Christians today. Because 80% of Christians believe that they are good works. Now, 80% of the whole population, world population, they believe that by their good works, they would enter the kingdom of heaven. Say, so, oh, I give gifts to uh, the charity, I take food to the poor and needy, I, uh, I come to church, I do this, I do that. And they think all those things will be enough to make them inherit the kingdom of heaven. No. No, we can never be good enough. If human beings could, by their own efforts, achieve salvation, then Christ did not have to come and suffer like he did. It's because he knew that we humans could never, never, never attain to God's standard of righteousness or holiness. That's why he came, shed his blood, so that when we receive his sacrifice, that blood is applied to us, is imputed to us, the righteousness is imputed to us, and God looks as if, as if we have not sinned. Like as if we are like Jesus Christ. Only when we come under his blood, though. It's so not a works. So, no matter how good you are, no matter how, you know, some people, they, 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 they beat themselves, they are bleeding, they walk on hot holes, they, they, you know, do all kinds of things to themselves, trying to pay for their sins. All those things will not save you. Yeah. Yes.
God can find so all Christians doing evil, committing fornication, and all these things. No. No, 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 that's not the plan of God. That is your own plan. If you are the workmanship of God, you should not be in that because you were created to be like Christ Jesus. You are created in His image to be like from Him, the pattern after Him, which meant good works, which had been made laid before me, paths of righteousness. Isaiah 19.25 Isaiah 19.25 So we thank God for the spiritual words we are confirming that the gift of salvation is by grace not by works Go on um, Isaiah 19.25 Yes Whom the Lord of whom the Lord of hosts shall bless. Yes. Saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, mm -hmm. and Assyria, the work of my hands, mm -hmm. and Israel, my inheritance. That's it. The work of my hands. Where the work of God's hands. So we thank God for his word tonight. Let us pray. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, the Michael, most merciful and blessed Father, we thank you for the words of life you've given us tonight. We thank you for the light you're shining in our hearts. That you send me a word that we shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. Mm -hmm. Father, let your truth set us free tonight mm -hmm. from the deception of Satan, from the deception of sin, from the lies that we can never be good enough to warrant our salvation. Mm -hmm. Father, let us know that we are saved by grace through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, through faith in His finished work, and that we cannot on our own ever attain to our salvation. Father, let that finish over the cross, not be in vain in our lives. Let that be applied for those who willingly receive that sacrifice, that they might wrap that answer in the book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name.